Hello everybody, Jeff Olson here with Danfoss Drives. Today's video will demonstrate how to connect wirelessly to our My Drive Connect app or MCT10 using our Wi-Fi LCP. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. All right, let's get started here. The first thing we're going to need to do before connecting the Wi-Fi LCP to the drive is to get the drive's SSID and the password. The Wi-Fi LCP will create a wireless network that we're going to need to connect the mobile device to. So to do that, we're going to start out by going to Main Menu Group 30, Special Features. We'll scroll down to 30-9 Wi-Fi LCP, and here we find parameter 30-90. This is the SSID. This is what the drive will broadcast itself as on the network. By default, it's the word Danfoss followed by the drive serial number. Now you can change this to something that better describes the VFD here if you want to, which would certainly be helpful in knowing what drive you want to connect to if you have multiple drives with the Wi-Fi LCP. So you can change that there. Then we're going to go down to parameter 30-92 password and we note here by default the Wi-Fi password is Danfoss1933. So once we know the SSID and password, we can swap out the standard keypad with the Wi-Fi unit. And then we can move on to connecting to the network. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and open the Danfoss My Drive Connect app. You can download that app to your mobile device in the Apple or Google Play Store. So once the app's open, we'll see we have two ways we can connect. One of them is actually an offline connection or a demo mode, and the other is our online connection. So I'll select that. It's going to show us that we're not connected, so I want to change Wi-Fi settings. And we're going to search for the broadcasted SSID. It remains the default, Dan Foss, followed by the serial number. If you were to have changed that earlier, it would identify itself accordingly here. Now we're going to use the default password, Dan Foss1933. and click the join button. Here it shows we're connected so I'm going to go back and now I can open the app. It does indicate we are connected so I'm going to hit the launch button. And at this point here we can change the password if we want to. If you do change the password it will take effect at the next power cycle. For this video I'm going to hit cancel and just move on. And now that the app is open, the status screen is active, and this is all live data here. So we're looking at real readouts of the connected drive. If I wanted to change any of these variables, is all you need to do is click the variable, and it'll give you a list of the selections you can choose from. Down here, we see the control type. So I can control the drive here. Currently, the status line indicates it's in a stop condition, and the off key is selected. So I have the choices of hand off or auto. If I select hand, it's going to give me this warning ensuring that it's safe to operate. If I hit continue here, now we are in local control mode. So the drive is on, and I can actually adjust the speed here locally, and the status line reflects what the drive is doing. We go to auto mode here, we go back to auto. Now let's take a look at the menu groups we have to pick from here. So we, we've just looked at the status screen. Quick menus will show us all the quick menus, including the smart start feature. It's similar to doing that through the LCP. Here is my main menu. And anything that I do here, any changes that I make, are going to be active or on the fly. So we're live communicating to this drive, so this is all going to be reflected as soon as I make changes. I'm going to go ahead and make a parameter change here that's going to generate an alarm so we can see what happens. And we'll notice that uh, we actually have a push notification come through here that shows that we have an alarm. If I hit OK on that alarm, it'll give us a description of it. Down here I can move into the alarm log icon and it will show the active alarms and all past alarms. So the alarm log is in here. And finally, we have this LCP copy feature. This copy feature is going to allow the parameters from the connected drive, so the one with the Wi-Fi LCP you're connected to, to be uploaded to the LCP itself or via the app. For this example, I'm going to choose the app. 
So right now I have one file stored in the app. It's called PID Setup. You can have multiple files stored in the app. I believe up to 20. So if I select the copy button, now it'll ask me which setup I want to copy. And you're going to have to give it a name. We'll just call it default and hit confirm. And then that upload will take place. Now we have two setup files here. Now if I wanted to write any of the saved files to a different drive that I was connected to, all I need to do is select that file and then I click restore. So now it will restore that file or write that file to the drive that this app is connected to. Gives us an indication when it's complete. So I'll click continue. Then the last couple things we have here, we have the ability to export save files from the app. When I click that, it'll ask me which one I want to uh, export. And when I click the export button, it's going to go ahead and open up my email, and I can send it that way. That file can be sent to someone else who can then save that file on their mobile device. And when you click import, then that person can search for that file, bring it into the app, and now they're able to write that file to any drive that they're connected to as well. The last feature I want to show you with this Wi-Fi LCP is how to communicate with our Danfoss MCT-10 software wirelessly. So we'll do that now. The first step will be to connect the PC to the Wi-Fi network that's being broadcasted. So we're going to go down to the network adapter and search for that network. I found it here, so we'll click Connect. At this point, we're going to enter the network security key. If you previously changed it, you'll want to enter the appropriate key here. If you left it default, again, it's Danfoss with a capital D, 1933. And we'll click Connect. And it'll take a minute to make the connection. Once the connection's been made, as we see it has here, we can go over to the software. And I want to highlight the network. At this point, I want to right-click that and select Add, Remove, Configure Buses. We're going to use the Add button here, and in the drop-down menu, I want to select the Danfoss Wireless Direct. We can give that a unique network name. And we'll click OK. And now we see that after closing this window, a new network has appeared. I want to highlight that, right click, and select Scan Bus for Active Drives. See here that it did locate that drive on the wireless network, and now I have a live connection to that drive wirelessly. We can make changes, read and write to that drive. So hopefully this video was informative for you, and thanks for watching. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Danfoss Drives can provide additional technical support parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.